NASA's scientists are celebrating success. Roger, don't move, Juno. Juno, welcome to Jupiter. Cheering and hugging overnight, they learned the Juno spacecraft successfully started orbiting the planet Jupiter, a mere 540 million miles away. The mission was launched nearly five years ago to study the composition and evolution of the planet, which is the largest in our solar system. NASA did it again. <laughs> that says it all to me. There's a saying, uh, you know, it's not rocket science. Well, today, yeah, it really was rocket science. So there really is a reason we have that saying. Even Google is celebrating today with its graphic. Meanwhile, the Juno craft is getting feisty with its own tweets, like this one, declaring, I'm ready to unlock all your secrets, Jupiter. Deal with it. Joining me now to help us all deal with this is Kelly Beatty. Kelly is senior editor of Sky and Telescope magazine. Kelly, you don't have to convince me to be excited today. Okay. I'm excited Good. already. How big a deal in the pantheon of big deals is this uh, Juno thing? It's a big deal in this sense. When we send a spacecraft to Mercury, it's what happened to Mercury. When we send one to the moon, it's what happened to the moon. Here, we're talking about what happened to our solar system when it formed four and a half billion years ago. I want to so, get back to how we're going to learn about that. The thing I don't get, though, is when I first heard about this, I assume this is the first vehicle to be orbiting Jupiter. Galileo, I learned, uh, orbited it, what, in the 90s? In, in the, the mid-90s, mid that's right. So why are we so excited if we already did this 20 years ago? Ah, this is the up-close-and-personal mission, ah. where, the, where the spacecraft flies... Jupiter is 100,000 miles across. It's flying very close to those cloud tops. And by doing that, two things happen. You get immersed in the radiation belts, which Galileo wanted to stay clear of, the trapped radiation, the dangerous stuff. And you get to measure the gravity of Jupiter to probe in an indirect way what's going on inside. And the radiation thing, I assume, answers my next question, which is Galileo was orbiting for, what, eight, nine years or something. This is going to orbit only until the beginning of 2018. Is that because of the radiation yeah, the impact radiation it only takes so much? The radiation is going to do it in millions of times more radiation than a human can stand and, and have it not be lethal. Okay, we're going to get to your point about the solar system, which is a major reason you're here in a second. But before you tell us what we hope to learn, what do we already know? I know the 1,300 Earths could fit into Jupiter. Yeah. It's huge. It's the oldest, is that right, the oldest planet? It's not the oldest planet. They all kind of formed at the same mm -hmm. time. It might be the one that's most unchanged since the beginning of the solar system. And most importantly, it basically has the same composition as the sun, which you can't say for the Earth. And so in Jupiter, we're seeing a sort of cold, trapped, uh, preserved chunk of the solar system when it first came together, and that's why it's so important. Okay, so we're going to learn when it first came together. What is that, when we learn whatever it is we learn, what is that going to help us with? What's so, the value of the knowledge we hope to gain? So, for example, here's one of the great mysteries. Jupiter should have a lot of water inside it. That's Why? Because that's what the chemistry of planets coming together says, that if, if, if there's water in the solar system, Jupiter should have a lot of it. It's out there where it's cold, so, you know, the water collects and doesn't evaporate away. Hmm. And yet, Galileo, which had a probe that dove into the atmosphere, found very little water. Where did it all go? Is it hiding? Is it really not there? We don't know. So Juno will be able to probe down into those atmospheric depths blocked by clouds that we can't see and assess how much water is down there. And why do we care? And that we care because we want to know where Earth's water came from. Did it come from, you know, is water pervasive throughout the solar system and we just got a little bit of it? Did we get lucky and get smacked by, a, you know, a couple of big comets and, and got the water that we got? It's, it's really kind of a fundamental question. Yeah, the fact that, what does this cost, a billion one or something yeah. like that? The fact that Congress approve such thing in tight budget times and the fact that there's a wild success at least so far that's colossal news for the future in nasa right it's a big deal nasa needs to have success no question about it in order to keep getting the money it needs to show that it's doing well with the money it's given so tell us the, in the best case scenario when this thing crashes into jupiter in february of 2018 you know you're pretty impressed crashing? that I read it and I can't. Give me a hint and I'll tell you if I know. So it won't contaminate other places in the Jupiter system. That's like not Europa. a hint. You told me the whole thing. What do you mean hint? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, if it should go errant and crash into Europa, where we think someday it might have life, we can go there and check for that. You don't want to contaminate and find it, you know, relics of a spacecraft. Oh, this is what caused it. And, and, and so is water the primary thing we're hoping to learn here? Is that the deal? One of three. 
all right? The second being, what's going on inside? Does Jupiter have a core or not? Again, on paper, it should have, have a core. Is it hollow? It sh on paper, it should have a really massive core, many times the mass of Earth made of rock. But we don't know. And there's a school of thought that like the rock never settled out. It's just kind of swimming around on this the is inside. even better. Yeah, what's the third thing? Third thing is the irradiation belt that we were talking about. It cascades into the polar regions and creates beautiful auroras on Jupiter. And we want to see how that connection works. OK, before you go away, we only have about 30 seconds left. We talked about this New Horizons thing flying yeah. by Pluto ages yeah. ago. And it just, I always wonder, it's just going to keep flying and flying. And again, there's been funding for it to keep flying. To where is this thing going? It's going to a little body out in the Kuiper belt. That might be a, another fundamental thing, a building block for the planets. And the, the thing is, yes, it's going to keep going, but we didn't have to keep listening. NASA didn't have to keep funding the mission. And just but they within, are. Just within the last week, they got the go-ahead to fund it for the years out. 2019, January 1st, be there. I'm almost as excited as you are. Kelly yeah. Beatty, it's great to see you. Thanks so much.